Have you ever thought about the hidden stories behind the 1957 TV series Perry Mason? Well, get ready because there are plenty of surprising, funny, and even touching facts waiting to be discovered. As you watch this video, get ready to be amazed by the interesting stories and lesser known details that make this classic series unforgettable. Look out for funny, shocking, and emotional moments that will keep you interested until the end. Do you have a special memory connected to this famous show? We'd love to hear about it. Share your favorite experiences and stories in the comments below. Let's chat and remember the timeless appeal of Perry Mason. The TV series Perry Mason, which aired in 1957, had a big effect on pop culture. It was really popular at the time, and many people watched it. The show was a mix of courtroom drama and mystery, which people found really interesting, and it inspired similar shows later on. During its time on air, Perry Mason led to other shows being made, as well as things like toys and books being sold. These other shows explored different parts of the original series, giving fans new stories to enjoy. People also liked to buy things related to the show, like books or games. Perry Mason's influence didn't stop when it finished airing. It inspired lots of other TV shows and movies about law and solving crimes. The character of Perry Mason is now really well known and is linked with courtroom drama and fairness. In summary, Perry Mason had a big impact on pop culture and it's still remembered today as a classic TV show. A remake of the television show was announced in August 2016 by HBO. Nick Pizzolatto, known for his work on True Detective, was set to write with Robert Downey Jr. starring as the lead and producing. Raymond Burr, along with his partner Robert Benavides, established Sea God Nurseries, specializing in orchids. Over the years, they introduced more than 1,500 new orchids to the world, with Burr even naming one after his former co-star Barbara Hale as a symbol of friendship. Ray Collins, who appeared in 19 episodes of the series from 1962 to 1965, passed away in 1965. Despite his limited appearances towards the end, his impact on the show was significant. Dabs Greer, a familiar face on the original TV series, appeared in eight episodes. Notably, he played a role in One Angry Man, a humorous take on Perry Mason with a prosecutor named Mason and a defense attorney named Berger, reversing the dynamics of the Perry Mason series. In an episode titled The Case of the Barefaced Witness, an interesting detail emerged. The address on Fred Swan's car registration, 1E40 in Las Palmas Avenue, Los Angeles Cat corresponds to the location of General Service Studios in Hollywood. This studio was one of the filming locations for the show. Perry's office was situated in the Brent Building in downtown Los Angeles Ca. These specific settings added a touch of realism to the series, grounding it in the recognizable locales of the time. These behind-the-scenes insights shed light on the show's production and the subtle nods made within the narrative. The presence of Dabs Greer and the incorporation of real addresses in the storyline provide a unique perspective on the making of this classic television series. In most episodes, the climactic courtroom scenes were not part of a trial, but a preliminary hearing. This was due to the absence of a jury in preliminary hearings, which saved the cost of hiring 12 extras to play jurors. Raymond Burr, who originally auditioned for the role of Hamilton Berger, was chosen for the title role instead. For certain episodes like The Case of the Bountiful Beauty and The Case of the Fanciful Frail, Mason's office phone number was depicted as Madison 51090. However, in the case of the fan dancer's horse, Perry Mason dials this number, only to find out it belongs to the police headquarters. In the case of the bully bowler, Joe Kelly provides another number 271 20 which Paul Drake recognizes as Perry's number when repeated into the car phone. It's a subtle detail that adds to the intricacies of the series narrative. On the set of the show, Barbara Hale, known for her role as Della Street, could often be seen sketching. Throughout the series, she only missed eight episodes out of a total of 271, bringing her count to 263 episodes where she portrayed her iconic character. Despite her absence from those eight episodes, her name still appeared in the credits due to the industry practice of credit only. Additionally, William Talman's character in the series was named Hamilton Burger, which was a clever play on words as it was a nod to the popular food item hamburger with his last name, Burger. This subtle humor added an extra layer to the character's identity, creating a memorable aspect of the show. These behind-the-scenes tidbits offer insights into the creative process and the camaraderie among the cast members of the iconic television series. William Talman, who portrayed the determined district attorney Hamilton Berger, maintained a professional perspective, never allowing his character's frequent losses against Perry Mason to affect him personally. 
for Berger, the ultimate goal was serving justice, regardless of the outcome of the courtroom battles. Fred Steiner, the composer behind Park Avenue Beat, also penned the theme for an animated show featuring Bullwinkle and Rocky from Frostbite Falls, Minnesota, showcasing his versatility across different genres. Raymond Burr, the lead actor, faced an exhausting schedule, often spending nights at the studio rather than commuting home due to the demands of filming. His commitment to the role of Perry Mason was evident in his dedication to the production. In the 1957 TV series, auto sponsorship shifted frequently between GM and Ford, alternating almost every other episode. The main character drove a Ford Skyliner, then in the next episode, it's a black Cadillac convertible. Paul Drake's car varied between a Corvette and Thunderbird. Trage drove a 57 Buick sedan, then a Mercury. Raymond Burr is best remembered for his starring roles as the title characters of both series Perry Mason and Ironside. William Hopper initially auditioned for the role of Mason, but the producers decided he was perfect for the role of Paul Drake. This television series utilized three studios throughout its decade-long production. Early seasons were shot at the old William Fox Studios, later moving to General Service Studios before settling at the old Chaplin Studios. The studio grounds are visible throughout the series. In later episodes, the main character drove a Lincoln Continental. William Talman, a cast member, was fired after a party incident, although he was later rehired. Despite this, his acting career suffered, and he worked infrequently afterward. In the courtroom drama that unfolded from 1957 onward, Perry Mason faced his share of setbacks. He didn't win every trial. In one notable instance, in the sixth season's 28th episode titled The Case of the Witless Witness, he experienced a rare defeat. Another setback occurred in Season 1, Episode 38, The Case of the Terrified Typist, where a guilty verdict sent chills down Hamilton Berger's spine, only to be later overturned by Mason's legal prowess. However, the most widely remembered loss took place in Season 7, Episode 4, The Case of the Deadly Verdict. The client was found guilty of murder, generating suspense until Perry, as expected, managed to reverse the circumstances before the final commercial break. The show faced challenges when Raymond Burr, its main star, was ill. During his absence, guest attorneys like Betty Davis, Walter Pigeon, Hugh O'Brien, Michael Rennie, and Mike Connor stepped in to keep the legal drama going. Across the 271 episodes, a consistent pattern emerged in the titles, with only three exceptions to the norm. These outliers were Perry Mason, the case of Paul Drake's Dilemma, Perry Mason, the case of Constant Doyle, and Perry Mason, the case of a place called Midnight, deviating from the usual format. In Perry Mason's courtroom battles, losses, substitutions, and title deviations were important parts of the story, creating a compelling narrative that captivated audiences. Raymond Burr, diagnosed with kidney cancer, declined surgery to star in his final television movies. He appeared in The Return of Ironside and The Case of the Killer Kiss. Ray Collins, despite limited appearances in his final years, featured in nearly 130 episodes. Though mostly in black and white, one episode, The Case of the Twice Told Twist, was filmed in color during the final season, remaining unreleased for over 20 years. During the Perry Mason series, an unexpected twist led to William Talman's exit. After a police raid at a party he attended, he faced termination due to a morals clause in his contract. Despite denying any wrongdoing, this hurt his acting career and efforts to bring him back were not entirely successful. This incident limited his acting opportunities. In one episode, a strange mystery involved a small client. The person who cracked the safe remained unknown, adding mystery to the story. This unresolved mystery added depth to the show, making viewers wonder. Throughout the series, the main character drove three famous Cadillacs, the 1957, 1958, and 1959 convertibles showcasing his style. These cars became a symbol of his sophistication. In the world of the show, unexpected events and unsolved mysteries added layers, leaving a lasting impression on both the characters and the audience.